Talk, talk to me. WSRadio.com The San Diego Council on Literacy brings you Literacy for All with your host, Jose Cruz. Welcome to the show. I'm Jose Cruz from the San Diego Council on Literacy. Joining us today from the United Way of San Diego County is our our guest, Ian Gordon. He is uh, the Vice President of Community Impact. Welcome to the show, Ian. Thank you, Jose. Um, when I hear community impact, I hear a couple of things. One of them I hear, one of the things I hear is impact. The other thing I hear is uh, collective impact. Uh, and maybe you can describe, um, and I know you're, what, four months into to the job here, mm-hmm. but you have a lot of experience with education and careers, and, and we'll talk a little bit about more about that later. Sure. And, you know, the community and such. But tell us, uh, tell us the, about the work that you're doing at the United Way. Our listeners have a... Uh, their perception of what the United Way does, and, and certainly that's strong and helpful. It, it enhances quality of life in our community. But the United Way is doing other things besides what we understand when we watch the see NFL football and here's the football players. Hey, right. United Way rocks. Right. What are you doing with United Way? Sure. Thanks for the opportunity. It's you really bet. good to, to be here and to share a little bit um, about our work. Um, so the United Way is celebrating 98 years this year. And so we've been around for a long time. And as you mentioned, um, folks, depending on when they interacted with the United Way, they have a certain perception of what mm-hmm. the United Way does. So um, as, you, as you know, the um, inception of United Way was really the community chest model, where you would have folks donating to the United Way, and then we would identify um, good programs to mm-hmm. invest in the community. So it's been a while since we've um, we're moved away from that that model, right. uh, and so about seven years ago, did some really good um, intensive um, work around um, direction for the organization, and so we we've moved into the cradle to career um, collective impact. Um, uh, business, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we have been doing that now for about seven years and really deepening our work, um, particularly in um, City Heights um, when expanded to um, Lemon Grove and Vista, where it's really a- around um, education as our main focus. And so it's uh, cradle to career, as I mentioned, and community impact really is, you know, that's where the change takes place. Mm-hmm. Is really at the community level, and so we have been working in, in kindergarten readiness, third grade reading, uh, eighth grade math, high school graduation, and college and career readiness. So it's really that cradle to career um, at the community level, with the hope, and we're pivoting now, which I'll talk a little bit later, yeah. to regionalizing this work. So how can we take those practices that we have learned, not just from our work, but from the work of other really great initiatives and elevate that, take that to scale. And, and, and I've seen just as being a longtime resident here, just how the uh, United Way has um, focused its, its interventions, its, its funding, its funding into certain priority areas. I That's think that right. was the terminology. Mm-hmm. So it's good to see that because it, that is creating changes in places where we just seem to, have the same problems going on and on and on, and we're not really coming to solutions. But it looks like um, the United Way is addressing things more at a at a root level. Absolutely, it's really about disrupting the cycle of poverty uh, through two key areas: through education and family stability. So, really honing in on those. Now, I saw uh, just recently uh, where, um, and, and I know that yes, there, it's education, but it's also all the family stability things Absolutely. that we have to address, right? And things that happens. And uh, let's come back to that. Mm-hmm. But I was really impressed because I saw mm-hmm. with United Way receive funding, I want to say, from the Copley Foundation mm-hmm. to address absenteeism mm-hmm. uh, in certain communities. Uh, how much can you tell us about um, that particular intervention, why it's important, uh, how it plays into the work that you're doing? Sure. It's extremely important um, to ensure that, that um, children are attending school regularly. And we know that, you know, with, with, with um, missing school, obviously if you're not in the classroom, you're, you're not learning. And so it's really about how do we stem that chronic absenteeism. So that's, it's building on, on work that we have been doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the particular initiative is called Every Student Every Day. 
And the, the, the point of that is to really work with uh, community schools, schools that have been identified as part of the uh, San Diego Unified School District and the Lemon Grove School District, and working with the um, attendance intervention um, folks there, principals, teachers, to really identify those students who are chronically absent and to really reach out to them, bring them back into the classroom. So we have quite um, an elaborate way of doing that. We have something called um, Heroes, mm -hmm. which is here every day ready on time. Um, heroes. Uh, and so we actually get volunteers. That's another thing that United Way is extremely good at, is getting corporate volunteers, so folks that work um, in our both small businesses Excellent. and corporate organizations to come out. And we have a big, um, when students come to school after working with them, working with their families to get them to school, it's a big celebration. Um, we actually have our volunteers and some of our staff dress as superheroes. We high five them. We go to assembly, and it's a big, you know, celebration um, where their their peers, the other students and their teachers, and everyone's welcoming welcoming them back to school. Uh, and so that is really about and and, and it's not it's not just the fact that they've come to school, mm -hmm. but then. You know, how do the teachers then take it from there, recognizing them? So it's not, you know, it's, it's the opposite of, 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 you know, being shame-based. I think a lot of students, the longer they stay out, the more um, embarrassed they are to come back. So it's really about we're welcoming you back. You're here. You know, you're ready on time to learn, and it's a real celebration. But the work behind that yes. really is, and, and what we have done is that we have actually incorporated um, college students um, to get um, credit to be part of, and these are social work students um, from our area, universities and colleges, to, to, to work with the teachers, work with the students and the families. What we have learned too, Jose, I would say, is that our, our entry into working with these students is really around attendance and education. But what we found is that um, you know, an eighth grader isn't coming to school because they decided to you know, hang out with their, their peers, right? It really is about um, the adult support in the home or lack thereof that's getting them out. So then we, we start with the students mm -hmm. and realize that there's something going on in home that needs attention. So this really is an attendance intervention is what we call it, but right. it's really way more than that. I, I, I love the way uh, you're describing it. I didn't know about all this, yeah. so I'm so glad. And I think a lot of listeners probably didn't either. This is fantastic. Uh, and just uh, I guess we underestimate, we shouldn't or just don't know enough about how much uh, the some of the things we're seeing in terms of student achievement is based on not coming to school. I mean, how, right. how are things supposed to happen that way? You all have been very creative and resourceful in responding to this. And I think, you know, part, it's easy for us to say, man, you know, bad kids are not showing up for school. And, and you all have gone beyond that. You've done some research and you're mm -hmm. seeing the source of that problem. Uh, and is, is part of it also cultural that, you know, I've heard this before, that certain, certain families, certain things happen. He's like, hey, you got to take care of things that are happening at home. And we're going to keep our, our child at home today because somebody got sick, for example. That's absolutely right. Uh, and, you know, we are, um, uh, much of it is cultural, much of it is contextual mm -hmm. in terms of what's going on in the family, what's going on in the neighborhood. And uh, but you're absolutely right in terms of the level of importance. I, mean, I think all parents want their kids to do well. Mm -hmm. It's just that um, not all parents see the education route. Right. Right. So yeah. it's like, you know, I, you know, you know, parent might think I had a third grade education, but I was able to work at the local factory or whatever and mm -hmm. make a, a decent living for us. And you will fall in those footsteps. So a, a lot of it is. Um, and so when we talk about those um, that assembly, uh, many times we have, you know, folks, as I mentioned, uh, who are volunteering. We've actually used, um, you know, former athletes. We've used, you know, folks that are working, whether it's at UPS or at a bank. And the idea is to show these young people that not only are we excited that you're coming to school today, but, you know, how important education is. So the emphasis on education is really we're trying to reinforce that so yes. that so that it will go back home. And then when we work with the parents and our partners work with the parents, it really is around here's why it's important to go to school. So skipping a day, which rolls into two days, which is two weeks over the year, right. here's the impact that has. And when, the, when, you're, when your son, daughter isn't in school, here's what they're missing, and here are the long-term effects. So just kind of connecting yeah. those dots yeah. are important. Yeah, and I think uh, it's good to have a, an entity or a network of people who are telling the kids, hey, we missed you today. That's right. And uh, coming to school is a good thing. And not only that, 
uh, we have fun stuff here. But we're we're noticing and 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 we're uh, we're investing in you being here. And this this is why this is why it's important. That's right. And back to your original question, mm-hmm. it's a that's community impact, right? So we're saying yeah. you're not alone. You have a whole school community and neighborhood community, and even you know adults who work in Poway mm-hmm. who came in this morning. To welcome you to school. So you're talking about community wow. impact. It really is us wrapping ourselves around mm-hmm. our young people. And what are you hearing uh, as feedback from mm-hmm. parents and even school principals or teachers mm-hmm. about about the work you've done in this particular area? And I know there's other aspects of, of about right. that. We'll come back to that. Sure, yeah. sure. Well, I, I think our, our biggest fans are the school, the teachers and the schools and the principals, mm-hmm. right? Because they are getting that support that they've always needed. I mean, you ha- they have, you know, a teacher has a classroom of students. If two, three, or four of them are not coming regularly, um, you know, there's only so much attention that can be placed on those that are n- not in classroom or figuring out why they, they aren't coming, mm-hmm. right? They have an, an entire class to focus on, which right. is their job, right? Yes. So just having this support yes. from uh, the United Way and our partners um, really goes a long way. So they love the fact that we're in the schools. Um, what I will say, though, um, just to, to pivot a little bit, is that um, as 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 great as we feel supporting the schools in this way, we mm-hmm. realized that the first year we did this, um, we helped forty students, and then we increased that to about four hundred students. But oh what, what we do realize is that we can't find enough um, interns to scale this the way it's needed mm-hmm. to be scaled. Mm-hmm. So what we're pivoting to do now is to support the schools to be able to take this on by themselves by provide them with the supports. Very good. Well, uh, funding is an issue, and United Way is filling the gap. We're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, in our next segment. Um, I'm Jose Cruz from the San Diego Council on Literacy, and you're listening to Literacy for All Radio, powered by WS Radio, the worldwide leader in Internet talk. I've heard this is like one of the best pizza spots in town. Yes, it is. I'll do a slice of pepperoni, slice of vegetarian. You got it. And I will pay for all of that in three days. In three days? <laughs> What's that mean? Well, wait, you accept credit cards. That money's not going to hit your account for three days anyway. I need my money quicker. At Chase, we hear you. With Express Funding, card payments are in your Chase account the next business day. Go to chase.com slash express funding. Chase for business, so you can. Compensated participation, all businesses are subject to credit approval. Not all clients are eligible for next business day funding and additional terms, conditions, and restrictions apply. Donate cash, furniture, clothes, and other gently used household items to Father Joe's Villages and get a nice tax break in April. Every donation is tax deductible. Believe you can make a difference. Be Father Joe. Go to neighborhood.org or call 1-800-HOMELESS to donate today. Life is full of misadventures. From car crashes to home fires to getting choked out on the mat. Yes, I said getting choked out because I'm Carlos Kramer, jiu-jitsu competitor, MMA and media personality, and mild-mannered insurance agent. You can follow my adventures on Kick-Ass Radio, and I can protect you from life's misadventures at Kramer Insurance. Home, auto, life, business, and workers' comp. We're at KramerINS.com, and I want you to join my world. Identity theft costs over $20 billion a year. When was the last time you changed all of your passwords? Don't be a victim. The nonprofit Securing Our E-City Foundation is here to support you. They serve individuals, families, seniors, businesses, and nonprofits throughout San Diego, helping to make a safer cyber experience for all. For more information, visit securingourecity.org or call 619-630-2444. Too much to do? Not enough time to get it done? Call on the experts at Another 8 Hours for your business support needs. By partnering with Another 8 Hours, we allow you to focus on the more important matters, like being in front of your clients, doing what you do best, rather than being stuck at a desk pouring over paperwork, rummaging through emails, returning phone calls, and struggling to get everything done by yourself. Meanwhile, your family and social life are going down the drain. Go to Another8Hours.com or call 8 More Hours. That's 866-734-6877. Hi, this is Rob Barnett, VinVillage.com, where wine lovers connect. Be sure to tune in weekly to Vin Village Radio for exclusive, in-depth interviews with the who's who in wine and food.
Securing Our eCity Foundation is a nonprofit organization focused on cybersecurity awareness and education. Formed in 2011, their mission is to enable every San Diegan to live, work, and play safely in the cyber world. For more information, visit securingourecity.org or call 619-630-2444. securingourecity.org, 619-630-2444. securingourecity.org. 